This weekend in Spa Francorchamps, we lost a beloved member of the motorsport community. Young 18 year old driver Delano Vanderhoff died doing what he loved. Everyone at Inside F2 would like to send our condolences to Delano's family, to MP Motorsport, and to his fellow drivers. Hello everybody, welcome to the F2 show. I'm your host Fraser Ford and joining me to review round eight of the season, we have Inside F2 writers Lawrence Griffin and Aaron Harper. Okay, but before we get into all of the action, Aaron, you're acting very suspicious. You said to me pre-show uh, that you'd like to uh, jump in before we get talking about the uh, action. Do you, you have a question? Is that right? I do. And I'd just like to ask you how you enjoyed your weekend in the paddock in yeah. Austria. <laughs> I did. I really enjoyed it. First of all, thank you to, to Formula 2 for, for, for letting me in the paddock. Uh, I don't know what you were thinking, letting me in the paddock. But uh, yeah, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, Lawrence is shaking his head there. He doesn't know what they were thinking either. Um, yeah, really enjoyable experience. It was just it was really cool to be, um, you know, uh, in and amongst it, get a feel for the, for the atmosphere, the, the drivers all floating about. You, you really get a flavour of that raw emotion of, uh, you know, who's uh, who's elated, who's a bit disappointed, uh, who felt like felt like there was a bit more on the table in qualifying, for example. So, yeah, thank you for asking, Aaron. It was uh, a really good weekend, um, and uh, I'm really excited to, to talk about it as we're going to do for the next half an hour or so. Excellent. I mean, it would, must have been so cool to be in there and get your sort of reaction to the drivers. Yeah, it definitely was. And, um, you know, interviewed quite a few of the drivers. It's, uh, you know, really interesting getting their thoughts and, uh, you know, uh, I suppose feelings as well uh, after sessions, as we said, after qualifying, uh, before the sprint race, for example, after the feature race. Um, and a lot of those articles uh, are on InsideF2.com. So go and check them out if you haven't done so already. But uh, yeah, should we, should we get into it and uh, kind of discuss what happened over the course of the weekend. And Aaron, it was quite fitting, wasn't it, that uh, it was Delano's compatriot and friend, Richard Vashaw, who was the winner of the feature race this weekend. And uh, Dutch team uh, VAR, their first win in the in the category. Yeah, it was almost, you know, that, that right kind of levels of sentiment because you didn't want it to be a, a sympathy win or anything. But Richard Vashaw thoroughly earned that victory through good strategy, having the pace, and it came on a poignant weekend that obviously his, his friend had passed away. So it meant that much more to him. And there was that secondary bonus in that he'd won the feature race in Austria last year and was disqualified for not having enough fuel in the car. So to do it on the weekend that his friend passes away with a Dutch team in Van Amersfoort and to get their first win and to put right the wrong of last year, so many emotions for Richard. And we saw that come across in his post-race interview and I thought he spoke really well. I mean, you could see the emotion in, in him and he was trying to come to terms with what he'd just achieved and winning a Formula 2 race is no mean feat in itself, but to do it with all of that going on and around and the emotions, it's very difficult. He must, he must have realised when he was leading that final lap under pressure from Ayumu Oasa exactly what was going on and to make no mistakes it shows the capacity that he's got. And it's a real sort of shot in the arm for him as a driver and his, his future that he can deal with this sort of situation and come through it in such flying colours. So thoroughly well earned, thoroughly deserved. And, you know, congratulations to him on the victory and, and Van Amersfoort as well. They have been knocking on the door of a result like this for a long time. Jake Hughes was putting in some great performances with them last year. They couldn't quite hang on. But this time in Austria, they... They got it all together and they got it right. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, it was a bit of an epic race as well, Lawrence, wasn't it? We actually have a question from Mitchell. Um, is that Richard Vashaw's best performance in Formula 2? I mean, in, yes, maybe he did get a slight bit of luck, but he did everything right after that safety, safety car restart, didn't he? And um, yeah, brought it home. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was a brilliant performance to go from P11 to P1. That's always going to be impressive. And the way in which the race finished, you know, we've seen Iwasa hold off people in the final laps of races before and survive that immense pressure to win. And this time it was for sure doing that to Iwasa. Um, and it always seems to be a great story with Vashore when he wins, whether it be winning on the opening round of 2022, when he was the last driver to actually be 
to actually have a seat for that season. It looked like he wasn't going to race at all. And then he comes in first race and wins it. And his last three races in Austria are, are DQ'd after the race, having won, spun out in the sprint race this year, and then won. What a story. And, you know, what a, what a thing for him to win, like we've said, on this weekend with everything that's gone on, with how poignant it's been. Um, it was great to see him make that alternative strategy work and just light up the track in the final laps. We know how good he is. His experience really told this weekend um, with how difficult it's been for him to be able to bring yourself out of that situation and win with everything that's going on. That's something really impressive. That's something that we've seen from drivers like Charles Leclerc, who, of course, managed to win, I think it was again in Austria, when when his dad had only recently passed away. So it's a real, real mark of, of who you are, not just as a driver, as a person, to be able to do that. Um, so, yeah, absolutely fantastic to see for sure winning for, for so many different reason, reasons. Yeah, great performance by Richard Vashore and the Van Armsfort Racing team as well. And now they've got their first win under their belt, the team that is, VAR. Uh, can they start competing for wins more regularly, Aaron? Or do you think this was a bit of a, a fluke result and uh, maybe it's still a bit more building to do? What do you think? I'd like to see them at the front more regularly. And in Richard Vashore, they've got a driver who can do that. And they've, as I said before, they've been threatening a result of this magnitude for a while. And in Formula 2, there's not, aside from the likes of Prima, there's not, re- and maybe ART as well, there's not really teams that sort of stay at the top too long. They fluctuate quite a lot. And that's even from race to race. So they're in a good position. I, I wouldn't put it past them for more wins this season. But at the same token, it's a very competitive field. So even if they don't, it's not necessarily, you know, all doom and gloom. It's, you know, it's a very competitive field in Formula 2. And I think even if they're a relatively new team in F2, they've got loads of experience in single-seater racing. So I think it was always just going to be a matter of time for them to eventually get up there. And all they need to do, like Aaron says, is put the finishing touches to it. They need to keep getting both cars up there at the same time, which is something that they've struggled with so far. And just getting that balance right for both drivers on a given weekend, which again will be easier when they've got more knowledge of the car. And, you know, like Aaron says, it, it is difficult to stay at the top in F2. We see such a rotation of teams. And equally, it is very possible for a team to go from a terrible season to quite a brilliant one. I mean, just look at where Shrews were last year. You know, no points, bottom of the bottom of the pile. And how well they've performed this year in comparison. Um, so when you look at that, by no stretch of, of the imagination is it sort of unlikely that they're going to get to a point where they can challenge quite consistently i think yeah absolutely a massive well done to the the var team and uh, yeah let's see what they can do for the rest of the season now they've got their first win uh, over and done with um enzo fittipaldi um yeah told us exclusively on sunday that he felt as though he could have he could have won the race at the time of the safety car really cost him didn't it he was the 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 leading runner on the alternative strategy ahead of richard for who was struggling to, to kind of keep in touch with him um and yeah it, it was obviously after the arsenal Leclerc incident uh glad everyone's okay after that it's never nice to see a wheel uh flying off uh especially towards the marshals it's not what we want to see but um yeah Enzo, obviously a virtual safety car was uh called uh, you know brought, brought out at that point and then it turned to a safety car just as Enzo Fittipaldi had gone past the pit entry um and yeah obviously it meant that uh yeah he, uh, Richard Vashore could peel into the pits and Enzo Fittipaldi had to to do another lap behind the safety car how unlucky is that for him Aaron that's uh it's yeah really unfortunate and uh he could have won that race couldn't he it's shockingly bad luck isn't it because Enzo Fittipaldi performed so well last year and I mean, I tipped him for his first win in our season preview and this was the moment and then it was taken away by the timing of the safety car. But that said, he's not the first driver to lose out for for a winning position from the timing of a safety car. He won't be the last either. That's just the way motorsport works, unfortunately. And the way Formula 2 have got the rules set up in that you can't make your mandatory pit stop under the virtual safety car really hampered him because under virtual safety car he would have come in he wouldn't have gained as much time as he would have under a normal under a full safety car but there still would have been 
more time gained for him and he wouldn't have had so many positions to drop back having done a slow lap behind the safety car. And Enzo was very unlucky in the, the way that that panned out. If it had been called five, six, ten seconds earlier, perhaps he could have got into the pit lane. But that's the way the cookie crumbles sometimes in, in motor racing. Before that, excellent drive from Enzo. Really, really impressive. On the level that we saw last year when he was at Charousse. Lawrence, why do why is that rule different from Formula Two to Formula One? In that Formula One, obviously, you can pit under the virtual safety car. Formula Two, you can't. And and should that be something that Formula Two, you know, could look to change so that drivers can pit under the virtual safety car? Because I'm sure Enzo Fittipaldi will be saying uh, we should be able to pit under the virtual safety car, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's definitely the way that he'll feel now. Um, I think if you asked Richard Vashaw the same question, he'd give you a very different answer. Um, it's hard. That's, that's probably why we don't let the drivers make the rules. But yeah, it, it is a very odd one that, that there is that difference between Formula 1 and Formula 2. It's perhaps not the easiest for fans to understand always, that though you have those two different sets of rules. Um, but, you know, that is that is the way that it is. And it's it's the same for everyone it's just like aaron says the racing gods will will give and take and so you sort of just have to take the rough with the with the smoother in, in situations like this yeah absolutely unfortunate for enzo fittipaldi unfortunate also for frederick vesti in different circumstances unfortunate that safety car came out in the first place because he was uh yeah a control in that race wasn't he ended up p3 did well to hold on to p3 actually um but uh yeah that was again that was quite unfortunate wasn't it Aaron that uh the safety car kind of came out and uh and ruined his his race which he was uh, he was he was heading to a race win there wasn't he and extending his championship lead even further yeah he was he, he drove superbly he made a brilliant start <laughs> it was like he was in a different category I mean it was a super drive from Fred Vesti and really backing up his recent form but it is just the same as he was saying in Monaco be consistent. He's ended up with third place. He's finished ahead of Porsche, his closest championship rival. Okay, Iwasa's finished ahead of him, but it's only a three-point gain, four-point gain for Iwasa because he had the fastest lap. So he hasn't lost out a huge amount, and it's about the consistency. If he keeps finishing third for the rest of the season, he's going to be very difficult to stop. So it would have been nice for him to win, but I think the the racing gods that, that Lawrence mentioned were smiling down on Richard Vashore for... Uh, appropriate reasons so uh, yeah maybe there was a little bit of fortune or misfortune going other people's way but you know for, for, for Richard for sure to get the win as we've already spoken about a really sort of positive aspect to this weekend. Lawrence positive weekend for Frederick Vesti does he leave the weekend happy with that? I, I don't know because these drivers are so hungry he, he, he'll, he'll be thinking of what he could have got I'm sure um, but you know still leading the championship and getting third place will ease that a little bit and I think he's just driving with so much confidence now I think he'll be in a place where he's thinking well it doesn't matter I'll I'll come back next week and I'll win then and you, I can't get luck, unlucky every week and, and like Aaron says when if you're getting unlucky and you're still finishing third then you can feel pretty good about yourself it's a it's a sort of if you ever watch enough match of the day it, it's a cliche it gets thrown about a lot that if you can you know have poor weekends effectively and still come out with the results and still be consistently up there it's a sign that you're that you're headed for for a win basically and and that's what he's proving now he looks with every weekend that passes he looks more and more like the full package and more and more like a potential winner of this of this series this year yeah, I completely agree. He is, as every weekend goes by, he's looking stronger and stronger. He's consistent, which is, I know, a buzzword that we can me constantly mention here on the F2 show in Formula 2. We actually need a bit of a dinger, don't we, every time uh, we say it's consistency and momentum are the two words that we constantly say, don't we? We need ding, 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 ding every time we say it. But they are the... But we've, the, done, the... we've done well. We haven't said track limits yet. We haven't. No, so, we might come so on to that, Lawrence. You know. we, may, we may well come on to that, absolutely. <laughs> but... Um, 
Yeah, it was. It was, isn't it? I'm I'm very glad that we didn't have uh, an investigation for six hours after the race or whatever it was in Formula Two uh, that uh, changed the result of uh, the Formula Two standings like we did in Formula One. But anyway, we won't mention that, FIA. <clears throat> um, Jack Doohan, a really a, a much better weekend for him, wasn't it? Um, he said to Inside F2 that he felt that he was the fastest driver on track, actually, on, on Sunday in the feature race. He was lining up Frederick Vesti for a move. He feels like he would have got... Frederick Vesti uh, had the safety car not come out and he feels like he could have won that race. I mean, um, yeah, it, it was a much better weekend for him, Lawrence, wasn't it? And uh, how, how how will he feel coming away from the weekend uh, knowing that, uh, you know, the pace was clearly better, but he still didn't quite, he didn't even get on the podium in the end. I think the the beginning part of this season will definitely change how he how he feels. I think at the same point, last season or or if he'd been more consistent through the start of the season he'd probably feel pretty good about this weekend again sort of maybe similar mindset as Fred Vesti in that you know things don't go totally your way but you know that you did everything you can and you feel sort of roughly okay with that what he'll potentially worry about slightly is the fact that in a year where he's had a lot of bad weekends he's had a good one and hasn't quite been able to capitalize it not necessarily of his own of his own volition but that I think will will sort of um, be quite an annoyance for him. But he was he was driving brilliantly. The double overtake on Martins and and Miney uh, on lap two, I think it was of, of the feature race, was was sublime. And he was just really unfortunate not to be in the place to have the tires to challenge for the win. Just seeing him at the back of that four, sort of watching it unfold was was such a it was such a hard one to watch um for for the doing fans i'm sure and he is getting better he's growing into this season but he's still probably only achieving towards the lower end of what people expected of him this season when we spoke about title contenders for this year um in our in our season preview you know jack doing's name was thrown about perhaps more than any other as the title contender this year um so by the same token, I can only imagine how tough it's been for him, knowing that he has that expectation on him and how much he's learning as well. Um, and if the team bosses are patient enough, they might get a more complete driver out of the fact that he's had to go through this process of struggling with the form, building himself back up and finding that balance in the car and finding that confidence again, which, again, we are seeing signs that that is happening. Yeah, I, you know what? I, I did feel for him after the feature race. Um, he, he he just kind of shrugged his shoulders. And, you know, when we were talking about the rest of the season, he was like, well, you know, it, it doesn't really matter from here. And uh, it, I, I did feel for him. I, I, I think, you know, for for him, he he came into this season expecting this to be the season he could have won the championship. This could have been his championship winning year. And we're halfway through the season, over halfway through the season now. Um, and, you know, P9 in the standings, a million miles away from where I, I get imagine than he expected to be at this point in the season um and the, yeah he just looked deflated so I did feel really sorry for Jack doing in the paddock this weekend and um you know uh no matter what he does it you know I'm sure a couple of wins uh, maybe over the next couple of weekends will will cheer him up a little bit but I think regardless of what you know how the results go over the next couple of weeks I I, I still imagine he's still going to be a little bit flat in the uh the city he's, he's still not going to be anywhere near the championship which is uh I imagine where he wanted to be at the start of the season. Aaron, do you think he'll stick around uh, next season? Do you think he'll give it another go for a third season? Or is this the last time we'll see Jack doing in Formula 2 this year? Do you, do you think he's, he's kind of going out in a, a little bit of a disappointing way, if you know what I mean? Well, I'd like to see him back next season because I think he's a very talented driver. And I think Alpine will want to keep him around as well. In sort of a weird way, I think this season might work for him. And like Lawrence has already mentioned, you know, it would become a more complete driver having to work through like a tough season like this. So these drivers like Leclerc, Russell, Piastri, who just turn up in Formula 2, blitz it and end up in Formula 1 like yesterday, it they don't have to go through those struggles and they have to go through those struggles in Formula 1. And that's a much more unforgiving environment to be learning your craft and, and making these mistakes and learning about yourself. So in some ways, I think it will work for him in that respect. But also look at the situation at Alpine. They've got two drivers who are locked in for a while. Stick it out another year, I'd say, Jack. Uh, the, the, only, the only curse of that, of course, is the, is the third season sort of expectations on him that Porcher's had this year as well. Um, if 
he had the same sort of beginning to the season next year as he's had this year in his it, it, when it's in his first his third season rather that will be really really tough for him to 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 recover from and you know people's memories are very short in motorsport and team bosses even at alpine that have nurtured him and helped him along the way they they will be very quick to move on if the performance isn't there so there's there's definitely a lot of of pressure on him um but i think he'll it seems like he's sort of going through the motions sort of psychologically this season. And I think we can expect him to be more sort of resilient and tougher next season. And it would be great to see him go for the title again and, and to see him racing at his best consistently because right from the off in formula two, he's, he was quick. You know, he, he had a couple of, of weekends um, at the back end of, of 21 and then last year, he came out in Bahrain and put it on pole in the very first session. So we know the talent is there. And I think that's why it has been frustrating to see his results this season. Um, but yeah, definitely all hoping that he can he can start performing towards the end of the season, more like what we'd expect and extend that through to next year. Absolutely. Timing is everything in motorsport. And uh, as you say, Aaron, if uh, if an Alpine seat isn't necessarily available for, for next season, maybe Jack doing, uh, yeah, going back into Formula 2 next season and, and winning the championship, it could be better timing and it could end up working out for the better. Let's wait and see on that one. Um, a few other notable mentions throughout the weekend. Jack Crawford uh, going from strength to strength, winner of the sprint race, his first win in Formula 2. And uh, it was a really impressive performance actually Aaron wasn't it yeah well it wasn't necessarily a sprint race because it was wet so they were <laughs> slithering about and it was a bit a slightly more pedestrian pace but a brilliant drive and I, I was fortunate enough to be doing the the sprint race uh, report for the website and I must be honest it was a bit of an underwhelming drive in some respects because you didn't notice Jack Crawford he was just there at the front he he started on reverse grid pole lost the lead because they had the split tire strategies. I think he was on the. I can't remember. I can't remember what they started on. I think he was on slicks. So um, he just sort of bided his time. Ended up back at the front. Didn't do what Richard for sure did at the restart early on and, and spun on the curb. He did everything really, really well. Like a driver who's been in this category for many more seasons than he has. Not that they're in it for too many seasons, but you, you get the, the idea a super performance. And then Victor Martens was chasing him down in the latter half of the sprint. And Martens could make absolutely no impression on him, which I thought was credit to Jack Crawford. And we'd seen his potential last year in Formula 3. It hadn't quite come together yet for him. But Jack Crawford just goes about his business and he's ended up on the top step of the podium. So a super, super effort from the American driver. You, you talk about fine fine margins in, in motorsport very first lap of that sprint race he was very very close to to going off locking up on those slick tires on a on a damp track still you know he he breaks maybe a meter later and that's the that's the race completely over for him like we saw with with doing i think it was that same lap so yeah wonderful that he's able to hold on to it and make the make the result stick Absolutely. His fourth podium of the season, all in sprint races as well, um, which is, uh, yeah, shows qualifiers there or thereabouts as well, isn't it? He's uh, always between that seventh to tenth kind of area. Um, a few other things uh, I wanted to pick up. Uh, I'm going to say them all at once and you boys can, uh, you know, go through them if, if, if you like. Ollie Behrman, 16 places gained in the feature race. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, Trident, first points uh, or good points in, in the sprint race. Shame Novelak uh, lost that podium, obviously. Uh, and Jam Carrera as well in the, in the sprint race. Uh, Aaron, I come to you. for You can do that in whatever order you want to. Ollie Behrman, Trident, uh, Jam Carrera. Um, yeah, good weekend all round for all of those, I'd say, other than obviously Clem Novelak, who uh, it looks like a really good weekend. And then now, course you got disqualified but always good to see jam doing doing well because obviously the, the journey that he's been on coming back from his injuries uh ollie behrman he actually made like nine places on the opening lap of the feature race and then pitted <laughs> so he had to do it all again but he showed the speed was there and he showed in the sprint as well that the speed was there him qualifying in 19th wasn't representative of where that car should have been i think he fell foul of the track limits and then uh that inspired seven-time world champion to copy him in the uh, Formula One Grand Prix. So uh, 
he should have been starting much further up. And based on that speed, really could have been a contender for the victory, depending on how the strategies have played out. And Trident, yeah, they were a real surprise. It was a bit of an upside down result in the sprint, wasn't it? Because you got drafting teams that hadn't been scoring points, scoring all the big points that were on offer in the sprint. And teams that have been scoring all the points this season went home on Saturday night empty handed. So it was great to see the, for want of a better phrase, the little guys doing well on a, on a, a tricky day where it was all up in the air and it was hero and zero stuff. So credit to the teams, credit to the drivers who got that, got, got those calls right. And that includes Clement Novelak, even though he was disqualified, which was really disappointing. Absolutely. Um, Aaron, well answered. And Lawrence, I've kind of, uh, I've stitched you up a little bit there because uh, Aaron's uh, answered all of those. Have you got anything else to add to that? Any of uh, Ollie Behrman, Trident, JMC, uh, anything uh, to add? Yeah, great, great, great to see JM up there. We, we we spoke already about VAR. It'd be nice to have seen, you know, Correa in the sprint race, for sure, in the feature race. It'd be nice to have seen them both up there at the same time. Um, yeah, wonderful. Talking about having both drivers up there at the same time, wonderful to see to see both Tridents so far forward at the um, in the sprint race. I almost had to sort of blink and check that I was seeing what I was what I was seeing. It was it was fantastic to see them, you know, properly getting their elbows out as well. And speaking of getting your elbows out, you know, Ollie Behrman can put on a show like the best of them, you know, overtaking. And he had so much fun overtaking that he thought he'd pit and do it all over again, <laughs> um, which was which was fantastic. And, and I think something that was really interesting was in the sprint race when Vesti was right behind him, Ollie Behrman went and made those places up. And his teammate, who's the championship leader, struggled to make those same moves in the same way. And I think that'll make him feel really good about about his his abilities this season um so yeah i mean ollie behrman's always one to watch but he, he certainly proved that this weekend do you reckon uh vesti was thinking championship at that point i i don't i don't think so i think he was maybe just i, I think I, I i imagine that the drivers are just sort of going on instinct in that moment i think it's probably a bit early to start pulling back because of championship I, I i don't know maybe maybe he maybe he was um but i yeah i, th- I think i think those drivers are, f- are full attack pretty much 99.999 percent of the time which is which is how we like them to be that's what we love to see isn't it um yeah guys that is all we got time for today my thanks to lawrence and to aaron for joining us on today's show On a tragic weekend for the motorsport community, there are no words that are more fitting than that of the feature race winner, Richard Vashore, on his in-lap. I'm thinking of Zidano. I just want to say my thoughts are with his family and all his loved ones. We're all going to miss him so much. Thank you, everybody.